The MK Party's parliamentary leader, Dr. John Klopp, has withdrawn his nomination to serve on the Judicial Services Commission. This follows an interim interdict against him, which barred him from participating in the JSC interviews currently underway in Johannesburg. Let's now speak to Kenny Mapanga, a CBC News reporter, who has been tracking this particular story for us. Kenny, of course, this afternoon we're seeing Dr. John Klopp withdrawing um, his nomination there to the JSC. What does this mean, particularly for Part B of the application to not have him serve um, in this particular, um, you know, body going forward. Indeed, good afternoon to you, Bongiwe, and to the viewers at home. I'm currently coming for you live at the JSC interviews here in Johannesburg, where there's currently deliberations on who will make the list for recommendations to the Supreme Court of Appeal. Of course, when these six interviews were being conducted here at the Johannesburg venue, we saw the breaking news come through that Dr. John Klope has, or the MK Party rather, has withdrawn his nomination. Um, uh, for the designation to the JSC. Of course, a number of questions are arising now as to what happens to this particular October leg of the JSC sitting now that it means that he has withdrawn his nomination. And then two, what happens to part B of the application on the question of the legality surrounding his designation to the JSC? Well, of course, part B, I think that application will still have to go through because it surrounds a question regarding the legality of sending an individual has been removed from office by majority vote to serve on a JSC which made that gross misconduct finding and contributed quite greatly to him being removed from office and the rationality of such a move. We know that there are contemptuous statements that the parties will still want to clarify and then of course there's an issue of cost. So we can expect that Part B, at least on the interested party side, will continue in the courts in order to achieve finality on the clarity of the question of the legality of such a first-time instance that we are seeing where you see a removed judge being designated to the JSC and then of course there's a question as to what happens to the lawful composition of the JSC following this uh, withdrawal of the nomination of Dr. John Klope. Well we know now that the JSC hasn't received anything yet from Parliament or the Speaker of the National Assembly and they haven't sat to discuss this issue so as we stand right now he's still a member of the JAC and what hinders him from coming to this JAC sitting still remains the interdict that was issued out by the Western Cape High Court in September. Therefore, his absence is a justifiable one as a result of that order. And of course, the JSC remains lawfully composed uh, in the absence of that communication to the JSC stating otherwise. And of course, I mean, Kenny, when you think about this particular, um, you know, sitting of the JSC, there have been quite a number of interviews that have been had so far. Candidates being grilled even about some of the, you know, the judgments that they would have made um, in the past. And you think about a candidate, for example, who's had to be under scrutiny, um, you know, for some of the judgments that were taken on review and also overturned. This is quite a significant part of the judiciary, given the workload that we've seen over time. Well, usually the uh, JC will begin its interviews by seniority of the courts, being the constitutional court being first, but unfortunately you did see that the JC failed to attract enough candidates in order to sit and have at least a number of interviews for one vacancy at the constitutional court. So we won't see that uh, very important uh, court, or the highest court in the land, it's seen as a prestigious post, however, they won't be able to fill that one vacancy that was advertised earlier this year. Then of course, what we are dealing with today as the Supreme Court of Appeal. Bongiwe, this is the appellate court for a number of litigants in the country. This will be the final court that you turn for relief to. So, of course, the bar is extremely high for the kind of candidates that can make it into this appellate court because there's no room for error. You literally need the cream of the crop for the SCA. So, of course, candidates will be grilled regarding the number of overturned judgments, some errors they may have made 
uh, what they've done for transformation in the judiciary, as well as some highly politically charged matters that they've presided over and their views on how they've handled uh, those issues, etc., etc. So these are the kinds of issues that you've seen been tabled before the six candidates to ensure that when the JC deliberates, as they are deliberating now, that they pick the best possible candidates to head to these appellate courts so that those three vacancies can be filled. What we are waiting now for, Bungiwe, is for the deliberations to be completed. Then the JSC spokespersons will be able to report back to the media who are stationed outside that meeting and outline whether they were able to get the minimum of three uh, candidates to recommend or advise the president to appoint to the SCA or if they failed in the task of reaching those three vacancies that can fill those judicial vacancies. But it's still a long week ahead. We expect it to sit uh, for a number of judicial vacancies across the country. Of course, next week, Monday, everyone is expecting to see the interviews for the judge president of the Western Cape. That is going to be possibly quite a huge uh, court uh, interview to look at the process then. And of course, tomorrow, we'll be seeing some of those specialist courts being the land court, the labor appeal court, where they'll be interviewing for a number of vacancies there. All right, uh, Kenny Mapanga there, uh, bring us up to speed um, with the interviews there at ju the Judicial Service Commission.